My name is Tasha Howard and I'm an elementary teacher development specialist for the Houston Independent School District. Today I'm going to do a read aloud for you. The book I'm going to read is called Hurricanes, The Science Behind Killer Storms. So this is a book about hurricanes and it reminds me of when Hurricane Harvey hit us about two years ago. It caused a lot of flooding and damage to our city. I also remember that school was canceled for about two or three weeks because of the flooding. It damaged a lot of homes and businesses. Some people are still currently rebuilding their homes today. I can connect this story to what we're going through today. Before we go and get into our story, I'm going to cover some vocabulary words. The first word is Hurricane. Who feel that strong wind blowing? It is a strong, violent wind, in particular, a tropical storm in the Caribbean. So we're going to see that word in our story. Another word we're going to hear in our story is disaster. It's a sudden event such as an accident or a catastrophe that causes great damage or loss of life. Our last word that we're going to see is water vapor. That is water that is in the form of a vapor or gas. It is part of the water cycle. When liquid water is heated, it turns into vapor. So before I begin reading this book, I'm going to give you your thinking job. And this is what I want you to do as I'm reading the book. You're going to think about the details from the story that will help you determine what the key idea is. Hurricanes. So starting with our book, Hurricanes, the Science Behind Killer Storms, written by Alvin and Virginia Silverstein and Laura Silverstein Nunn. You will not hear about hurricane disasters in Kansas or the Sahara Desert. Hurricanes not only need heat to form, but they also need moisture and lots of it. That's one of our words, disaster. The warm ocean waters of the tropics are perfect for the birth of a hurricane. Meteorologists or weather scientists use the term tropical cyclone to describe any storm over the tropical oceans that spins in a circle around a center of low pressure. Tropical cyclones are known by different names, depending on where they are formed. If these storms develop in the North Atlantic Ocean, the Northeastern Pacific Ocean, the Gulf of Mexico, where we live here in Texas, or the Caribbean Sea, they are called hurricanes. Remember, a hurricane is a strong wind that blows. In the Northwestern Pacific Ocean near Japan and the Philippines, hurricanes, that's one of our words, they're known as typhoons. They happen near Australia and in the Indian Ocean. Those are called cyclones. So I'm going to stop here for a minute and think, hmm, I wonder what the author wants me to know from the text, just from those paragraphs that I just read. I think the author wants me to know that there are different types of hurricanes depending on where you live in the world. Going on, a hurricane's life cycle. A hurricane goes through a series of four stages as it grows. We have a tropical disturbance, tropical depression, tropical storm, and hurricane. And remember, the hurricane is a strong wind that blows. Not all storms reach those higher stages. Tropical disturbance. Tropical disturbances form over warm tropical oceans with water surface temperatures of at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The warm surface water evaporates, sending water vapor into the air. Remember, that's one of our terms as well. We have water that when it gets heated, it turns into a gas. As the moist air rises, it cools. Some of the water vapor condenses into water droplets forming clouds. Clouds pile high up into the atmosphere 
and thunderstorms may develop. Tropical depression. As the warm, moist air above the ocean rises, it creates an area of low pressure. Cool, heavier air from the surrounding area sinks, replacing the rising air. A cluster of thunderstorms joins to form a single large weather system. Soon, a whirlpool of hot, moist air is spiraling all around that low pressure center. As the swirling winds turn, they gather more energy from the warm water below. Then the wind speed rises. If the winds reach 38 miles per hour, the growing storm is ready to enter the next stage. Here we have a picture of a typhoon. The high waves crashed ashore in Japan in 2007. Other information we can gather from this picture is what does hurricane mean? The term hurricane comes from Huracan, the god of evil, named by an ancient Central American Indian group. Spanish colonies later changed the spelling to hurricane. Tropical storms. The storms continue to grow stronger and the winds blow faster. The strong winds draw up more heat and water vapor from the ocean surface, feeding the storm. Some of the water vapor condenses, producing heavy rain. Thunderstorms release heat, giving the storm even more power. Viewed from an airplane flying above the storm, the clouds have a distinct circular shape. If the wind speed reaches 74 miles per hour, the storm has reached the last stage a hurricane. Hurricane, the swirling winds of a hurricane surround the eye, an area of warm low pressure at the center. This is a calm area that may be from 60 to 40 miles across. In the eye of the storm, it might be sunny with only light winds. To someone on the ground, it seems like the storm is over, but it is not. So once again, I'm going to stop and think for a minute. I've read some information that the author gave us, and something that surprised me is that the eye of the storm, it may be sunny and cool, but I know the storm isn't over, but some people think it will be just because it's calm. But just know in that eye, the storm doesn't mean it's over, it just means it's calm. So that's something that surprised me as I read the story. The strongest winds blow around the edge of the eye, called the eye wall. Bands of thick clouds, called rain bands, swirl around the eye wall. As the storm moves, the area that was below the eye suddenly gets stormy again. The rain bands can produce more than two inches of rain per hour. As it develops, a hurricane moves across the ocean. It usually travels northwest at a speed of 10 to 20 miles per hour. It may eventually reach the coast and move inland. As soon as the hurricane passes over land, however, its wind speed drops. Remember that the warm ocean water supplied the hurricane with energy. The air over land is cooler and drier, so the hurricane gets weaker. Soon it may become just a tropical storm, and eventually it dies out. Hmm, as I was reading, I noticed that as the temperature, the water, and where the hurricane went, the air, all of that changed. So when all of those factors change, it makes the hurricane change as well. And once it moves from the water to land, it can become a tropical storm, and then it'll eventually die out. I'm going to stop the read aloud here, and you can access this book online at the HMH website. Now we're going to move into our mini lesson by Amy Scotty. Thank you. Hi, my name is Amy Scotty, and I'm a literacy teacher development specialist with Houston Independent School District. And today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna piggyback off of what Tasha Howard just did, the lesson she just did, the read aloud. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna um, teach you the signposts of numbers and stats over the book that she just read. So uh, what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna determine key ideas. 
So authors of informational texts, such as hurricanes, the science behind killer storms, often include numbers and stats, such as specific words, number words, or amounts. So the signpost numbers and stats gives additional information to the reader to visualize the information in the text. So now um, using this anchor chart that we have here and using that the story that we did, when you're reading, you notice specific numbers and number words and amounts. So words that stand for uh, numbers like one or 2,000. Also, numbers can be things like dates, when something happened or how much something costs. We want you to stop and ask yourself, why did the author use these numbers or amounts? The answer might help you to come to a conclusion, make a comparison, see the details, um, make an inference, find facts, or recognize elements. So today we will practice using the numbers and stats to determine key ideas in your text to gain a deeper understanding of key ideas in the story, hurricanes, the science behind killer storms. Let's continue uh, using notice and note numbers and stats to gain a deeper understanding of key ideas. Some people think that numbers and stats are just finding numbers in your story or text. Don't make the mistake of just circling or underlining numbers and stats. We must evaluate the numbers and stats to see key details. We can better understand these key details by asking ourselves, why did the author use these numbers or stats? So, for example, in paragraph five, tropical disturbance. Tropical disturbances form over warm tropical oceans with water surface temperatures at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to underline. The warm surface water evaporates, sending water vapor into the air. As the moist air rises, it cools. Some of the water vapor condenses into water droplets, forming clouds. Clouds pile up high into the atmosphere and thunderstorms develop. All right, so if you notice, I underlined 80 degrees. And so now that we have underlined the number and stat, what do we do next? Well, we answer the question, why did the author use these amounts? So. The author used this number to explain that the water must be 80 degrees before a hurricane's life cycle can begin. So that tells us as a reader, if the water temperature is not 80 degrees, then it's not going to form a hurricane. So that's what that number tells us. And the name of that is number and stats. All right, so, um, do you see how the numbers and stats help you to visualize what is happening in the story? So now we're going to try it together. We're going to look at paragraph six now. Tropical depression. As the warm, moist air above the ocean rises, it creates an area of low air pressure. Cool, heavier air from the surrounding area sinks, replacing the rising air. A cluster of thunderstorms joins to form a single large weather system. Soon, a whirlpool of hot, moist air is spiraling around a low pressure center. As the swirling winds turn, they gather more energy from the warm water below. The wind speed rises. If the winds reach 88 miles per hour, the growing storm is ready to enter the next stage. 38 miles per hour. All right, so hopefully all of us underlined our key number. And then what are we gonna do next? We're gonna ask ourselves that question. Why, why did the author use this number or this stat? And so hopefully what you came up with is, the author used this number to explain that the hurricane is moving through the cycle to become a hurricane. So that's why that 38 miles per hour 
is important in that story. Do you have that image in your head now? What if the author didn't tell you or give you a number there of how many miles per hour that was? You wouldn't know how to visualize that in your head. So that's important why the author does that. So now what I want you to do is I want you to try it on your own. Let's reread paragraph seven. What number or stat did you notice? All right, so hopefully all of us underlined 74 miles per hour. What do you do next? You answer the question, very good. Why did the author use these numbers or amounts? And the answer to that is hopefully you put, the author wants us to know that when winds get to 70 miles per hour, the storm has become a hurricane. So it's not a hurricane if it's 72 miles per hour or 71. It's a hurricane when it's 74 miles per hour. So as you continue to read the story and any story or text, don't forget to use the notice the name, number, and statistics strategy. This is a great strategy that helps us evaluate the text to determine key ideas. Thanks so much. Be well, Houston.